Hello everybody, it is a great pleasure to present our paper Modeling Multi-Component Droplet and Spray Evaporation Dynamics using Functional Group Method UNIFAC. This work was done by Mr. Wang Yang and I am uh, Dr. Jinxiang, we are from Brunel University. So first, the background, uh, we know that uh, efficient evaporation is a prerequisite for effective fuel air mixing, ignition and combustion. Nowadays, we have uh, uh, more and more blends of uh, renewable biofuels and fossil fuels, for instance, ethanol mixed with uh, gasoline. Yeah. So, um, because they are uh, ethanol and gasoline, they are distinctly different in chemical structure and molecular size. Okay. So, if you look at here, this is, um, uh, this is the uh, structure of uh, ice octane which is uh, the, a, a very simple surrogate for, for uh, gasoline. And for ethanol, we have a hydroxyl uh, functional group there, which will affect um, the evaporation of this uh, liquid, uh, bi binary component liquid mixture when we consider the evaporation. Okay, so this is why we need to revisit the evaporation model uh, for this multi-component or many component uh, liquid fuels. Most of the evaporation models we're using now is based on the vapor liquid equilibrium concept. Okay, interface, uh, vapor mixture, uh, liquid mixture. Okay, to reach thermodynamic equilibrium between the two phases, the tendency of component I to escape vapor phase V should be equal to the tendency of I to escape liquid phase L. Okay. The tendency is quantified by the fugacity, which is proportional to Gibbs free energy. Okay. So the, the two fugacities should be uh, equal uh, for the uh, component in the vapor phase and in the liquid phase. So in the, in the vapor phase, the fugacity uh, is determined by the fugacity coefficient of this component I in the uh, vapor mixture times the, uh, the partial pressure. For liquid component is determined by the activity coefficient, the mole fraction of the component in the liquid uh, uh, mixture, and the fugacity of pure liquid. Okay. After a bit of rearrangement, we reach this. So for the orange part, so this is directly uh, uh, related to uh, pressure. Okay. And then um, uh, this, um, it, this measures the deviation of the gas the vapor phase mixture from the ideal gas, okay, so which is also closely related to pressure. So if we group this contribution into a into a single correction factor C, then this is what we get. Okay. In the in the present study, the pressure is not high, below 10 bar. Okay, so we can reasonably uh, uh, simplify this C to be one. And then the red part is the final VLE model we are using. Okay, so uh, for the eva evaporation model, this is what we do to calculate the droplet evaporation rate of component I, which is determined by the mass transfer spalding number. Okay, spalding number is related to the uh, the mass fraction of component I uh, in the vapor phase, related to the uh, uh, XIV, the more fraction of the component I in the vapor phase. Okay, so depending on how you see the uh, gas and the liquid uh, uh, mixture, if you use an ideal gas law and ideal uh, uh, liquid model, then uh, this is actually the classical uh, Rouse law. Okay, and then if we um, take into account the activity coefficient for the liquid components and then this is an ideal gas law with a non-ideal liquid mixture in this case we have this model okay where the the um, gamma i is the activity coefficient in this work the activity coefficient is determined by unifac universal quasi chemical functional group activity coefficient model so UNIFAC is a group contribution method 
a molecule is seen as an aggregate of functional groups. So the property of a fluid mixture, in our case a liquid mixture, is the summation of the contribution from all these functional groups and the interaction between these functional groups, but not from the molecules. Okay. So for real few, the the number of the species or components or molecules yeah, can be very large, J, but the functional groups, the number can be uh, much smaller. Yeah. So the um, uh, unique advantage of UNIFAC is it can determine uh, gamma i when no vapor liquid equilibrium data available for any of the binary component subsystems. So if we take this as, as an example, we have in the liquid mixture, we have three components. For other approaches like uh, NRTL, we need the uh, uh, VLE data for one, two, two, three, and one, three. Yeah, all these binary component subsystems uh, to determine the activity coefficient. But for UNIFAC, if you don't know the VLE data for 2, 3, it's okay. Only if you know the uh, properties of all the functional groups, yeah, A, B, until I, and also the interaction between these uh, functional groups, that will be okay for UNIFAC. Yeah. So in UNIFAC, we have uh, the, uh, uh, the activity coefficient comes from two parts. The contribution comes from two parts. One is from the uh, pure component uh, properties, and the second is uh, from the interaction between functional groups, not between molecules. It is not possible to list all the important papers. Here, we just want to illustrate what has been achieved in the topic of advanced uh, evaporation models. It is clear that Royce law is still extensively used by the community and few applications of UNIFAC in spray evaporation modeling, although it has some unique advantages we just mentioned. If we look at the uh, isooctane ethanol uh, uh, mixture, uh, the activity coefficients, yeah, so here the x um, uh, axis is the isooctane liquid phase uh, mole fraction. Okay, so towards this end you have more and more uh, isooctane, and towards this end you have more and more ethanol. Okay, so you can see uh, at both uh, ends actually the uh, 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 activity coefficient of the minor component is very high much larger than one and in this case we need to take into account uh, take into account the contribution of this uh, uh, activity coefficient to properly model evaporation of this uh, binary component mixture okay. and on the right hand uh, side is the uh, phase type diagram yeah and uh, based on the uh, uh, vle uh, concept so we can see here that UNIFAC and the uh, reference data, they agree with each other very well, while the um, uh, Routes law um, has a very poor prediction. Yeah. So it cannot, for instance, predict the azeotrope. Okay. And then uh, uh, even the uh, qualitative trend uh, is not good. Now we start looking at two component ice octane ethanol droplet evaporation. These are the conditions we use, which are relevant with the engine operating conditions. So we mainly look at two cases. E means ethanol. So in case one, the volume fraction of ethanol is 36%. These are the corresponding mass fraction and the mole fraction. Ethanol mass fraction, 39%. So in case one, ice octane is the major component. In case two, ethanol is the major component. This is the comparison on uh, droplet diameter. So we see at the initial stage, we have an uh, increase of the droplet diameter. This is because after we put the droplet into a high temperature environment, the droplet temperature increases 
and since our uh, dropper density depends on temperature, so density decreases. Although the droplet is evaporating, losing mass, but still overall, uh, we see the droplet size increase at the initial stage. Yeah. So here we have uh, Wright's law, we have uh, NRTL uh, prediction from this reference and our own UNIFAC uh, data. Uh, we can see that among these models, there's no evident difference between, more, uh, between these models in the droplet diameter uh, predictions against time. Yeah. So um, although this has been used to, a lot by the community to show the uh, validity of the evaporation model they are using or developing. Okay. So here we just want to say the comparison on droplet diameter is unfortunately not sufficient to judge the quality of the evaporation models. So we will uh, show this more clearly in later, uh, later uh, plots, comparisons. Okay. It will be more clear, the statement. And then we, if we look at uh, droplet the temperature comparison for the ethanol mass fraction 39% case, the trend is acceptable okay, between the uh, Wright's law and uh, UNIFAC and the NITL models. Okay. Qualitatively, it's okay. But for the EMAT case where the ethanol is the predominantly major component uh, at the later stage of the droplet evaporation, they give very different uh, predictions. Okay, this is this is because in Roy's law, uh, at the later stage of the evaporation, isooctane becomes the major component because ethanol always evaporates faster here. Okay, but for the Unifac and, R and RTL, uh, ethanol remains as the major component. Okay, at the droplet surface, so which controls the droplet temperature. This is a comparison between the two types of models on the vapor mole fraction at the droplet surface. Okay, and we believe this is a uh, this is a one key quantity to measure the quality of uh, evaporation models. Okay, so for E36 or EM39, um, where the ethanol is the minor component, we can see the trend is okay. Yeah? So between the uh, between uh, routes and the UNIFAC or NRTL. Yeah, so. But when the ethanol becomes the uh, predominantly major component in E78, uh, then uh, we can see uh, uh, the trend uh, predicted by rods is actually uh, uh, different or opposite to what UNIFAC and NRTL uh, gives. Yeah. Um, so this, again, this is because, so, so um, for an uh, UNIFAC, uh, the isooctane uh, uh, mole fraction at droplet surface drops very quickly in this stage. This means uh, they are completing this component is completing uh, evaporation. So they are they are quickly uh, evaporate into the vapor phase. Yeah. So and uh, but for right or uh, rot law because the uh, ethanol always evaporates faster than ice octane so ice octane uh, gradually becomes the major component at the later stage okay so um, which which is um, not you know properly uh, predicted yeah so if we look at the uh, um, ethanol mass fraction in droplet again for EM39, the trend is okay between uh, UNIFAC and, uh, and uh, Routes Law. But when the ethanol becomes the uh, major component, they give the uh, opposite trend. Yeah. Um, yeah, because in Routes Law, uh, ethanol, is always, uh, ethanol always evaporates faster. But for UNIFAC, actually, isooctane completes evaporation first. And uh, so, uh, separation factor alpha ij is uh, the relative vol volatility between component i and j. So it's a, a very nice and direct measure uh, of uh, which component evaporates uh, faster. Okay. So in Rod's law, alpha ij depends only on the satur saturation pressure of those pure components. 
which in turn is the, the is a function of the temperature only okay but for uh, more advanced evaporation models the separation factor depends on activity coefficients yeah is a f so so alpha ij is a function of not only on temperature but also on pressure and the liquid component uh, uh, mole fractions okay so here this is one yeah so uh, below one uh, because we are measuring alpha isooctane ethanol yeah so if it's uh, uh, below one then this simply means we can think of this in this way uh, ethanol evaporates faster so if it's above one then isooctane evaporates faster yeah so again for the uh, em39 case the two models give uh, uh, reasonably uh, uh, similar predictions okay but for em80 so with the unifact we can see that alpha this uh, separation factor is always bigger than one which means ice octane always evaporates faster at the uh, uh, job to the surface this is a route uh, law results yeah it's always below one because in Rout's law ethanol evaporates faster Okay, then we uh, apply this uh, unifact uh, to a spray modeling. So we do this in acid fluent, uh, in the widely used Aurelian gas and Lagrangian point source droplets framework. And the unifact uh, is implemented as a UDF, turbulence model, numerical schemes, computational domain size, grid resolution, and the ambient uh, gas is uh, quiescent nitrogen initial conditions and the injection parameters 200 bar injection pressure uh, yeah so the initial droplet size follows a rosin parameter distribution this is the uh, mean droplet size and the boundary conditions okay so for a two component uh, isoctane ethanol spray so in this case it's e85 uh, the volume fraction of ethanol is 85 percent okay we can see uh, the uh, Roch law gives a much lower prediction of the isooctane vapor mass fraction at uh, 30 uh, millimeter downstream of the nozzle okay and this is the contour plot And then we, we did a four component ethanol gasoline uh, E5 spray. So in this case, ethanol uh, is still takes 85% volume percentage. And the gasoline, uh, we use a three component surrogate. Okay? And this is the mass fraction among the three components. If we just look at the uh, ethanol here, and if we compare ethanol and uh, isooctane predicted by the two models, we can see for uh, Rod's law, which is the uh, red line, yeah, uh, it rapidly shoots to 0.1 and then steady until spray tip. But for uh, Unifac, it slowly increased towards uh, about 0.07 at spray tip. Okay. For ISO octane, uh, for Rod's law, it slow uh, uh, ISO octane. Roy's law it continuously increase okay slowly incre uh, increase towards uh, a value at about 0.01 at spray tip but for Unifac it rapidly increase to a much bigger value close to the nozzle and then decrease towards uh, spray tip okay and then if we al also if we look at the uh, close to nozzle region if you look at the uh, uh, Unifac predictions the isooctane mass fractions is bigger than the ethanol mass fractions yeah while for Roy's law it gives the opposite uh, uh, predictions yeah so ethanol is always uh, mass fraction is always bigger than the isooctane so again this is due to the you know the because in Roy's law the ethanol is always uh, evaporates uh, quickly more quickly than uh, ice octane okay uh, by taking into account the uh, activity activity coefficient we can more properly uh, predict 
the evaporation of this uh, four component uh, spray. I put up the summary and conclusions here. Many thanks for your attention and uh, your uh, comments and questions are very welcome.